Next topic is voids and honeycombs. Honeycombs and voids, uh, although sometimes used synonymously, are really two different things. What causes these, uh, these problems in concrete pours relate to the congestion of the rebar versus the mix design that was used. Sometimes the fluidity of the mix design is, is never had a chance to get around the bar. Sometimes it's vi lack of vibration, where the concrete is not vibrated and actually allowed to liquefy and get into all the tight spots. Um, sometimes lift depth, how far the concrete is being poured in lifts or being dropped. And then sometimes it could be form leaks, where liquid is actually going out of the form and leaving something behind that's not what was, was originally intended. The, bar the variables for fixing these scenarios depend on how big is the void size or the honeycomb size, how deep it is, uh, access to that, how can I, if I have to repair them, get material into it, what are the rebar details, the cost, is it more expensive to tear it out versus fix it, and if we're going to fix it, what's going to be the quality assurance testing to make sure we have it. A void is a physical area that does not have concrete, just like the word says in, in, uh, in, in concrete pour. On the bottom right you'll see a picture of a beam column connection where because of either the placement, the vibration, the mix design, or the, or, or the combination thereof, an area of concrete is completely open and, and, and not filled with concrete. That's a typical void. Other voids can be created by the reinforcing steel details. The picture on the right is actually a workmanship error in which a large span beam with large reinforcing steel where the contractor, instead of using continuous bars across the whole section, decided to splice the bars at, at, on the bottom. And instead of staggering the splices, the splices have all been put in the same place in the beam. As you could see, there's no way to even get concrete through that. It barely flowed around it. The other scary part is in order to get a lap splice to work, you have to have concrete around it to hold it to make it work anyway. So that's a pretty serious structural issue. Now a honeycomb, which is, which is, which is quite different, is uh, a scenario where this is a project on a very fast track construction site. Uh, they are pouring 11 foot high columns in place. Uh, they're actually pouring a high rise building at one floor a week. And normally in a column of that size, we would see some type of, of uh, pouring in the column in a single lift, but, but usually using some type of tremming, which, in which they're going to pass the, the grout hose from the pump down into the bottom of the, of the form, and as it fills up, they're withdrawing it. So they're, they're not pumping it under pressure, but they're making sure that how far out of that grout hose uh, the, the depth of which the concrete falls is controlled. Now, they didn't do this in this case, so imagine 10 feet high with all the reinforcing steel in that concrete. The concrete goes in, on its way down it's hitting stirrups, it's hitting vertical bars, it may be hitting intermediate bars across the face of that. So the aggregate is hitting that, it's separating from the cement, the aggregate's falling to the bottom, and it's creating what you see here in the slide, which is a honeycomb. Notice on the slide, there's no paste between the aggregate. There's, it, it got totally separated. So that concrete has super low compressive strength. It has, it's, it's, it's very porous and it's, it's not going to you know, be a very good material to, in a vertical loaded element like a, like a column. Um, in both cases, we're typically, as you can see in the slide, we're chipping that out and we're going to have to replace it with some type of process to fill that void. And usually using some type of very flowable grout, self consolidating concrete, and usually also having to use some type of form and pump, a pressurized, a pressurized placement technique that will allow the material to force it up into that shape.